Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to talk to you about the real estate market and how we're hitting an inflection point um, in September of 2021 and how this is normal after summer when kids and parents get back into work and school. But there's other factors that are going on that might have our real estate market seeing some depreciation in the near future. As far as new listings in 2019, 2018, usually at the end of summer when kids go back into school, you see it trending down and everyone's starting back up with their life. So home sales start to slow down and people moving and less homes on the market start to happen. So this is normal. Um, come September, we're going to see this and this is a continued trend throughout history. We also want to pay attention to is the median sales price. So if we go back to 2020, um, with Redfin data this time last year, let's see where we're at. So basically we see an incline with this Redfin data. Um, obviously due to COVID we had increasing prices right now in 2021 um, for September 12th up until September 12th we're seeing a 14% year over year increase and that is a decline from 19% back in June so we are seeing a slight decrease which is normal during this time of year um, I think that this graph is going to show median home prices continue to fall down, which is different than what we saw from last year. Um, and as we go into 2019, we also saw a decrease come September and all the way until October, we saw kind of a downfall of median home sales prices, uh, which in 2019, we had 6% year over year um, increases. And then we saw prices continue to kind of stay steady all the way up until December of 2019. And that's when prices continue to have a more um, steady increase. I want to take a look at the pending home sales and let's see right now we are 67,000 pending home sales compared to this time last year we were at 63,000 um, which as you can see on this chart right here um, we were up at 70% or sorry, 70,000 pending home sales in at the start of the year. And we've dropped down to actually 67,000 pending home sales. So compared to this time last year, there's a little inflection point that you can see. Um, it's a crossover. And this time last year, we we're actually on our way up with pending home sales. The one thing that we need to pay attention to uh, is the new listings coming to market. Um, in 2021, um, in April, we saw a huge increase in home sales. And then compared to 2020, um, during that time, in April, we saw a decrease. And it was a steady rise in 2020. But here in 2021, we're on our way down lower than we were in 2018. So year over year right now, we're at a negative 5.6% um, of new listings. So less homes coming to market, which means less pending sales. So even though we have less properties coming to market, we're seeing a decrease in those listing sales prices. And it might be because of A, the time of year, but also the buyers are not willing to pay as much as they were willing to. And there might be a shift in the buyer's mentality as it comes to the end of the year and more buyers just being left out of the market and kind of giving up and priced out even with these lower um, price points but 
Another factor we need to look at is what the Fed just came out with, and that is interest rates over the next coming years. Feds are gonna have two increases in 2022, 0.3 as well as 1%, and then in 2023, they're saying they're gonna raise interest rates 1.8%. So this is very interesting because before we didn't have these um, rate increases out from the Fed, and this is new news here um, in September. So with these increases comes price decreases. So with every 1% increase in mortgage rates, we'll usually see a 10% decrease in home price value. You might be wondering, Kyle, well, if interest rates and the Feds are gonna raise rates and interest rates are gonna continue to rise in 2022, 2023, and home values are gonna slowly decrease, then why would I buy a house now? Well, I think another factor that you need to take into account is the gains that you're gonna get over the next two, three years. So let's say home values go up another 4% in 2022. Um, and by the time the feds raise rates and prices come down a little bit, you gotta add and subtract that and also realize that you've been in your house paying your mortgage rather than paying your rent. So it's a give and take there. So with the eviction crisis and feds saying that they're gonna raise interest rates and mortgage rates will rise, um, you're kind of seeing 2022, you might see a maybe 2% decrease, maybe 2023, we see 5% decrease, and then 2024, maybe a 7% decrease with these interest rates rising. Another argument could be, what if people are tired of paying the high prices and we have more inventory come to market, we don't see those two, 3% gains over the years, then we're just talking negative home prices and values coming down and no offset with those uh, traditional increases of let's say 3%. So that's another argument that one can make. Right now we have interest rates hovering around 2.8%. And you have Freddie Mac survey coming out and saying in 2022, they think interest rates are gonna be at 4%, which is basically a 1.2% increase as to where we're at now. Um, and you have a lot of other predictions coming out um, over their quarterly forecast. Um, some people are saying that they see interest rates um, during the fourth quarter of this year coming up to 3.4%. And as I check Zillow's interest rate chart today, um, you do see price or increases um, from 2.4%. Five to let's see what today is around 2.8 percent um, and again people that have <clears throat> owned houses for a long time have seen interest rates over the past 14 years probably think this isn't a big deal um, because they're seeing interest rates around you know 8 to 14 percent um, a long 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 time ago but I mean, just over the past two years, we were up around 4.5 or yeah, sorry, 4.59% in 2019. And ever since then, we've had a steady decline downwards. Um, so I think that this graph is going to end up being more of a U-shaped as we go to 2022 and beyond. Um, but it's interesting to see, read this article, um, just basically mortgage rate prediction for 2022 um, Freddie Mac MBA economists predict a gradual increase uh, which is no surprise obviously coming out after uh, the Fed's new interest rate increases uh, lock in that low mortgage rate I would highly suggest you guys refi as soon as possible before the new year get that refi done or if you want to lock in that low interest rate on a purchase Better get into escrow pretty soon because uh, we're heading into uh, October and end of the year. So hopefully you guys stay bullish on the housing market. And if you're young, I would definitely stay bullish on it. If you can get into that first home, do so. You've got time to sit on the sidelines for the next couple of years and risk not seeing those gains or risking seeing the decline and potentially not holding through it, then that's up to you. But I think that the Federal Reserve um, and the rate 
hikes will have a steady impact on the real estate market. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and watch my next video, and I'll see you guys soon.